First up, I will say this is such a risk. I hate wedding dress, American and culture in the same sentence, but is this one working for me? Hello, my beautiful light brides. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Neil Noir. I'm a half Italian, half Canadian drag queen living in Belgium. And if you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are playing my favorite game, Fab or Drab, where we rate the looks of RuPaul's Drag Race UK versus the world, season two, episode seven, and let you know if the looks are fab and fabulous or drab and awful. And make sure to stay tuned all the way to the end where we let you know who had my fab and drab of the week. This week's runway theme is Take Me Up the Aisle, where the queens must give us their best interpretation of a wedding inspired look. So without further ado, let's find out who shined bright and who faded in to obscurity. First up, it's Hanaconda, and Hanaconda has decided to give you classic bridal. She's coming out in a big, white, poofy wedding dress, and she's paired it with a blonde updo and all of the jewelry. She said, you wanted wedding, I am going to give you wedding. First up, I will say this is such a risk. I think that when they give you a theme, you're supposed to interpret it and make it your own. She decided to go with the most obvious choice, but I feel like she got very lucky because everybody else decided to go in a very different direction. And so she did stand out for being the only one to go down this classic route. So it actually worked out in her favor. She looks like a bride. She looks like she went to a wedding store, bought in a really expensive wedding dress, put it on her and gave you the full fantasy. Is it the most original? No, but does she look stunning? Yes. I will say that Hannah sometimes goes a little kooky and a little wild and sometimes gives you way too much character and not enough substance. She decided to stick to the theme and just really give you the best drag version of herself. Although this is not where I would have went, she does look stunning. And because she looks stunning, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a bug. Next up, it's La Grande Dame. And La Grande Dame is coming out in this yellow, or should I say off-white, I'm not quite sure what color it is, wedding dress. And she said she is giving you post-apocalyptic wedding dress. She decided to go with a concept and she stuck with it. She's paired this beautiful feminine ensemble with this face mask that is really giving you that hard edge and definitely making it more avant-garde. Before we get into the dress, when I heard the theme, I will say that I was a little bit worried for La Grande Dame. And I say this because on her previous look, she did a wedding dress inspired look uh, with the guns and stuff on her back. So I was kind of curious what she was gonna pull off. So the fact that she went in this direction is super cool and super great because she is giving you yet another side. I love this. This is so original and so unique because the dress itself still feels very feminine and still feels very wedding because it's got a lot of those wedding tropes and materials put into it, but done in a really original way. When she pulled off her cape, you see that actually her arms are like silver and neon and it matches with this face piece. It is definitely giving you a little bit of that like Mad Max, but making it fashion. And I love it. Had somebody given me a wedding dress, this is how I wish I would have thought to do wedding dress because I hate wedding dress. Honestly, this is the most glamorous you're gonna see me. I like things that are a little bit weird and a little bit kooky. So wedding dress would have been such a hard concept for me. But the thing is my brain doesn't work like like all damned and she came up with this idea and I freaking love it. I wish I would have thought of it. Now I'm thinking to myself, what kind of post-apocalyptic look would do I want to do? Because this is truly inspiring. I love the face mask. What I also love about the face mask is that you can put it on to another garment and wear it multiple times. Actually, when she takes off her dress and you see the arms, it is like super cool on itself. Like you almost don't need this piece on top. I mean, I'm glad she has it because it gives you the wedding fantasy. When she wears it next time, I can totally see the photo shoot being without it. Do you know what I mean? All in all, this is super cool, super original, super inspiring, and just great, honestly. I don't really have a lot to say except for fab. <laughs> Next up, it's Marina Summers, and Marina Summers is coming out in this fully patterned coat dress paired with pants underneath and this black up to. She said she is giving you a traditional Filipino attire from the Yakan tribe 
I hope I'm saying that right. So she's putting in her culture into this mix. And that's actually what I love about Marina is that I am not very well educated in Filipino culture. So actually watching Drag Race and watching Marina compete on it, I'm learning a lot. I love that she finds a way to infuse her culture into a lot of her looks, yet still makes it accessible. I look at this dress and I'm like, cool, right? I don't necessarily read wedding, but that's because I don't know the culture of it. But when she explains the culture, I'm like, work, baby, work because she has found a way to integrate it all together. But whether you get the idea or don't get the idea, she looks great. Marina is very much a tailor, very, very much a master in making garments. Honestly, this season is becoming a little bit of Marina versus the world. You know what I mean? Like each week she turns it up. Maybe she doesn't get my fab of the week, but she's always up there. I think she's missed like once for me in the whole season. And this is not one of them. I think she looks cool. I think she looks original. Is it my favorite? No, I've seen Marina do amazing things. So it's going to be hard to top herself. But honestly, does Marina ever top? Jokes aside, she looks great. It's not necessarily my favorite. It does stand out mainly because of its color and its culture, but she looks good. And that is why she's gonna get a bow. Next up, it's Scarlet Envy. And Scarlet Envy is coming out in this white pantsuit with gold trim and big black hair hair. She said, you wanted wedding? I am going to give you the most American wedding you are ever known. And that is a Vegas wedding with Elvis. Now, for those of you who are not in the US or don't pay attention to the US culture, there is this thing in the US where you get married in Vegas, where Elvis is your officiant. And I love that she channeled this. It is so camp and so drag. And it is such a unique take. It is definitely giving you American culture and putting it on the runway. Yes, you did hear me right use the word American and culture in the same sentence. I know, like, what kind of culture does America have, right? Jokes aside, I love this idea. I love that she's taking something so stupid and mundane and really turning it on its head. I was always wondering how people were going to do a bridal and make it original, and this definitely fits the bill. This one doesn't need an explanation. You just get it. It fits a the theme, but it is a original, unique take on the theme. Now, Elvis on the runway is not necessarily the most original. We actually just saw it on the previous season of UK where uh, Tamara Thomas did an Elvis look, but this one works so much better and is so much more well-polished. It definitely feels like that intermix between male and female. It's definitely giving you drag, but still giving you the character it's supposed to be. It's not like I am carbon copy in Elvis. I am giving you a drag interpretation of it. All in all, I love this idea. I love this look. And for Scarlet Envy, it is definitely going to be a bug. Next up, it's Tia Coffee, and Tia Coffee is turning the corner wearing this white wedding dress. As she turns, you see that she has a baby belly, and you realize, oh my god, she's pregnant. She rips off this piece of fabric, and you realize, that's not an ordinary baby, that's an alien baby. She is giving you alien bride. She's walking out in this white dress with this clear baby bump. She's used lace a detailing to give you that wedding vibe, and she's paired it with this big silver hair. First, let's start about the positives. I love this hair. This hair is super original, super unique, super big, and it definitely commands the stage, which I really love. I also like that Tia is going with a dress. We usually see her in a bodysuit, so I like that she's switching it up. I think the idea of a pregnant wife is a really cool one, but is this one working for me? And I'm not sure. I don't know that I necessarily got Alien Bride, but also like, why are we going with Alien Bride? On top of it, the other issue I have is that the baby should be the focus of this dress, and but my eye keeps going to the hair because the hair is so big. So actually, I can't believe I'm saying this. I think the hair needed to be smaller, or I wish the hair told me something else about the story. Like, had she not said it was an alien baby, I would have just assumed it was just like a badly done baby. You know what I mean? So I wish that actually the wig would come off and, and there would be a brain or there'd be alien or there would be something to give me that alien vibe that makes it a little bit edgier. You know what I mean? I feel like this is really in the middle. All in all, I will say that this is not my favorite look from Tia. And as you guys know, I've been a Tia fan. I rated her well, while some of you guys didn't necessarily think I should have. This one just isn't hitting for me, especially when you see what all the other queens are doing. This one really doesn't level up to the same way. All in all, this was a little bit of a miss for me, and that is why she is getting a drab. <laughs> 
And that is it for this week's runway. What did you guys think of this theme? I personally thought that this was not going to be a great theme because I was expecting everybody to just come out with wedding dresses. But the fact that these queens really turned it up and went in different directions and gave us concepts on all of them made me actually love this theme. Who knew I would be a wedding type gal? But enough about that. Let's get into the reason why you guys are here. You guys are here to find out who had my fabs and drabs of the week. Well, my drab of the week this week has to go to... Yeah, oh. coffee. Honestly, she was the only one that I gave a draft to this week, and I find that hers just didn't measure up to everybody else's. But enough about the negative, and let's get into the positive. Who had my fab of the week? Well, my fab of the week has to go to... Carmen Envy. I love this idea. I think it was very original, and I think that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, it should have went to, like, calm down. And honestly, like Grand Dames was very spectacular, very over the top, very couture, but I just find that it needed a little bit of an explanation to get me to wedding, while Scarlet's you knew immediately, and it was very well done. A little bit simpler, but still done at a very high level. And that's why I gave my fab of the week to Scarlet. Y'all, next week is the finale, and I am super excited to see uh, all the queens come back and show us their next looks. The only thing is, is that I will be on holiday as it is Easter weekend. So I'm going to go be celebrating it with my chosen family. Don't worry, I will be dropping a video on my channel. However, the fab and drab of the season finale will be delayed. So I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you were waiting for it. On that note, once again, my name is Neon Noir at Miss Neon Noir on all social channels. And I'll see you in one of my next videos. Bye-bye.